In this video, we will look at the elements of a basic spine examination, focusing on neck and lower back. We'll start with neck. To begin your neck examination, expose your patient to the waist. Paul, do you mind taking off your shirt please? We will apply the approach of look, feel and move, keeping in mind the relevant components of the Canadian C-spine rules to complete an examination of Paul's neck. Canadian C-spine rules are a tool for selecting which patients require neck x-rays after injury. They are widely endorsed. If your patient requires x-rays, then take precautions to protect the spine. The Canadian C-spine rules are in three categories. Exclusions, low-risk events where no x-ray is required, and high-risk events where x-rays are indicated. Starting with look, have a look at the patient's general posture and you're looking for signs of asymmetry. If the patient has been in an RTA, there may be signs of bruising over the shoulder or chest area. Assess the posture of the spine. Look for kyphosis. The thoracic spine is normally curved forward. Kyphosis is the extreme curvature of the upper back. If the curve exceeds 50 degrees, it is considered kyphotic. Lordosis is the normal inward curvature of the lumbar and cervical regions of the spine. Excessive lordosis is known as hyperlordosis. And scoliosis is an abnormality. When viewed from the rear, the spine should appear perfectly straight. Scoliosis is a lateral curve in the spine, usually combined with rotation of the vertebrae. Moving on to feel, we will palpate the spinous processes of the cervical spine which is the midline of the neck. As you come to the bottom of the neck, there are two larger prominences, the first of which is C7, and the larger one below it, T1. Central C-spine tenderness is highly significant in terms of the Canadian C-spine rules. Moving on, we will do palpation of the transverse process of the cervical spine. Begin just below the ear and gently palpate down the spine. And you would repeat this on both sides of the neck. Active neck movements. The Canadian C-spine rules Look for your patient to have a minimum of 45 degrees of rotation in each direction. Oh, can you turn your head to look over your right shoulder? So this is over 45 degrees and look forward. And turn your head to look over your left shoulder. And look forward. Other neck movements you can assess are neck flexion, can you look down and put your chin on your chest and look forward? Extension. Can you look up towards the ceiling and look forward? And side flexion in each direction. Can you move your right ear towards your right shoulder and forward? And your left ear towards your left shoulder. Canadian C-spine rules require us to identify a deficit in sensation or motor function. 
You want to say this now? Oh, well, can you put your hands out, palm up, and close your eyes? Does this feel the same on each side? Tell me if at any point it doesn't feel the same. And we'll give a feel over all the dermatomes of the arm. A dermatome is an area of skin which sends sensory fibres to one vertebral level of the spine. The dermatomes of the upper limb are distributed between C4 and T1 in a longitudinal pattern around each limb. Back of the hand, and round the thumb, and each finger in turn. And the palm. Thank you, Bob. We'll move on to assess motor function. Can I ask you to raise your shoulders towards you and don't let me push them down. I'm feeling for equal power in both sides. C4. Can you bring your arms to this position and don't let me push your arms towards you. C5. Bring your arms up and don't let me push them down. C6. Don't let me push them up. C7. Put your palms down for me and raise your thumbs up. Don't let me push them down. C8. And spread your fingers out. And take hold of my finger and don't let me pull it free. T1. We will demonstrate reflex testing of the arm at the biceps tendon, brachioradialis and the tricep tendon. Biceps. Brachioradialis. And triceps. Again, we will use the look, feel, move approach. Observe the gait of your patient and look at their general posture. Paul, can I turn you around, Paul? Often with lower back pain, you will notice tense muscles in spasm. These are the erector muscles of the spine. Having completed look, we move on to feel. And I'll have a gentle palpation down the vertebrae of the lumbar spine. When dealing with patients with back pain, you have to be aware that serious diseases can present as back pain. You must be aware of different patterns of injury in children, adults and the elderly. Red flags are aspects of presentation which suggest a serious pathology. A key red flag which must be incorporated into every examination is the exclusion of a complete vertebral prolapse at L1 or L2. The spinal cord at this level takes the form of a loose bundle of fibres which take the appearance of a horse's tail and is called the cauda equina. The fibres of the cauda equina control bowel, bladder, lower limb and supply sensation to the perianal area. Widespread disturbance of these functions, indicating a prolapse of the disc, is a surgical emergency. Delay can cause the symptoms to be irreversible. And turn back around. Having completed feel, we'll go on to move. So active back and waist movements. Oh, can you lean over as if to touch your toes? Active flexion. Thank you. Support your lower back and gently lean backwards. 
Always ask your patient to support their back. Active extension. Thank you. Can you run your right hand down your leg as you bend to the side? And back. And left side flexion, the left hand down the leg. And back. If you can bring your arms in front of you, Paul, and we'll do rotation, left and right. Rotation occurs in the thoracic spine mainly. To continue the back examination, we will require to put our patient onto a trolley. Just going to lay you a little flat. As with neck, we will now carry out uh, examination of sensation and motor function of the legs. Oh, does this feel the same on both sides? Yes. Can you tell me if it ever doesn't feel the same? And I'll have a check over all the dermatomes of the leg. Down at the back. The dermatomes of the leg send their fibres back to the lumbar and sacral vertebrae. The distribution of these dermatomes is more complex than in the arm. L1, 2 and 3 supply the front of the thigh to the knee. A lesion there can cause referred pain, which doesn't go below the knee. Below this, the dermatomes extend to the foot, and referred pain will pass down the whole limb, usually at the back of the leg. And under the foot. For motor, can I ask you to bend your knee up towards you, flexing the hip. This is L2. Don't let me pull your leg back down. That's great, relax. We'd repeat that on the opposite side. Can I ask you to lift your leg straight in the air? And don't let me bend your knee. L3. Can I ask you to bend your ankle towards you? This is L4. Don't let me bring your foot down. L5 and S1. Can you raise your big toe towards you? And don't let me push it down. And S2. Can you curl your toes and don't let me straighten them? If there is compression of the sciatic nerve, this stretch test will elicit symptoms of referred pain from hip to foot. Ask the patient to relax their leg and will passively straight leg raise. And Paul, if you can tell me if you start to feel discomfort. Okay. I will now lower the leg and tell me when the discomfort eases. Sorry. I will now dorsiflex the foot. Does that bring the pain back? No. So we have a negative sciatic nerve stretch. The reflexes of the leg patella tendon and Achilles tendon. And just bend your knee slightly, Paul, and tap on the patella tendon. And if we can just take your leg in a slight tap on the Achilles. Repeat reflex testing on both legs. <laughs> 